Okay, well, welcome everybody. This is the um, Codex Group meeting. Uh, I am your host today, uh, Susan Salkind. I, uh, we're presenting here from Stanford campus in Palo Alto. Uh, Roland is traveling, so um, we'll just go ahead and uh, get into the meeting and our presenters today. Uh, first, a few quick announcements on our upcoming events. We have uh, Future Law is the big one coming up on April 4th. Uh, our website is up for registration. We're starting to get the agenda and speakers uh, posted, so please check it out at www.codexfuturelaw.com, uh, all one word. And then um, the uh, March event is going to be March 6th. It's a lunchtime speaker event. It will be on ground and uh, remote, and that is going to feature uh, the LexisNexis General Counsel, Ian McDougall, who is going to reflect on the last 10 years of uh, digital disruption in the legal industry. So uh, please check that out. It's on our uh, website and calendar uh, at the law school. So um, check that out and register and hopefully we'll see you there. So um, our first presenter today uh, is going to be, um, let's see, have to get our memo up here. Um, so uh, why don't we go ahead and get started um, with Killian. Killian, why don't we have you go first. Uh, Killian is going to uh, talk on the, an initiative from the um, World Justice Project. Yeah, thanks you, Susan. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, as Susan said, my name is Killian Doria. I work for the World Justice Project. Uh, so the World Justice Project is an organization that works on the uh, promoting the rule of law around the world. We do two things here. We do a, an index every year that measures access to the rule of law in 125 countries. And then we promote the rule of law as well through programs and through events. And in, in April, from April 29th to May 2nd, in The Hague in the Netherlands, we'll be hosting our World Justice Forum 6 on real, realizing justice for all. And one thing that we're doing at the forum is that we're trying to bring together practitioners around solutions for access to justice in different areas. So we're doing it on uh, the environment, technology, public health, gender, uh, labor and employment, um, and, and criminal justice. And we recently launched our World Justice Challenge 2019 Access to Justice Solutions. And this is what I'd like to talk about today. Uh, the challenge is designed for people, individuals, and organizations to submit projects that have uh, made a significant impact on access to justice in the areas I mentioned. Um, and basically we're offering finalists the chance to come and present at the forum, uh, have their project in the booth and present in front of all the participants that will be there. Um, and there will be a $10,000 prize at the end for the most valuable project. Um, so yeah, uh, just to give you a bit more background on the forum as well, uh, this is the first year where we've done a forum with a specific thematic focus. This is because this year at the high level political forum in July at the UN and at the General Assembly in September, uh, the member states will be reviewing goal 16 of the Sustainable Development Goals, which is um, peaceful and just societies. And so there's a lot of conversations going on around justice uh, in around the world and different communities. And so we're trying to basically get into that space and be a connector for other development areas and the justice uh, sector uh, and trying to sort of showcase what work is being done. And so the reason I wanted to present today at Codex is that a lot of the people there that will be attending this meeting work at the intersection between technology and justice. And so I was hoping that you would be interested in in submitting your project for the challenge and even participate, participating in the forum. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, I'm happy to take them. All right, so any questions for um, Killian? And uh, for remote audience, you need to unmute your mic or type your questions into chat. Hi, Killian. Uh, uh, this is Michael Schmitz here. Um, mm -hmm. I have a question about like what kind of 
projects, you know, besides the subject matter area, for instance, I've done a lot of work with cities in, in climate change and obviously climate justice is an emerging issue um, across the globe. Uh, what, what kind of, like, when you, you talk about this project, do you have any examples of projects that, that you think would be, make sense for the contest? Yeah, uh, I mean, we're looking for for projects that are pushing really innovative solutions. So um, currently, I don't have a, a, a project that relates so much to the environment. But for example, uh, one project that we have, which is on a human trafficking, is the idea of a victim navigator, where basically it's a person and an app that helps victims of human trafficking navigate the legal system. Um, to resolve their cases and uh, find justice uh, and have their rights valued. So that's one example I can give you. Um, uh, does that answer your question a little? Or would yeah, you like definitely, to yeah. No, I, can, I, 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 I get it. There's a, a, for like um, labor voices, something with it's basically like with um, uh, workers in factories that don't have access and often are ununionized and using um, the technology back and text to be yeah. able to report uh, labor violations and whatnot, stuff like that. Yeah, that's 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 exactly what we're looking at. Uh, actually, we, we, we've been in contact with someone that works also on human trafficking that does something similar using a blockchain to, to come into contact with people that are in human trafficking cases and need like representation and so using that to, to be able to build a, a messaging platform so that's exactly the kind of project that we were looking at that's great uh, Thank you. um so killian uh mikhail uh once is asking for a link to be put in the chat to the world justice project and just yeah. fyi to everybody that link was also in roland's announcement that went out yeah i'm putting um, it up now so okay i can have it yeah, so great. So while Killian does that, any any other questions? Um, I, Killian, I did note that there's a February 22nd deadline. Apologies if you did mention that, but I think there's some... Oh, yeah, sorry. That, that's great. I, I, I forgot to mention that. But yeah, the deadline for applications is February 22nd. Um, and I did also notice that people go to that link, there is uh, uh, some bullets on themes and requirements. One of them is labor and employment. Um, I did see, uh, to Michael's point, um, something on the environment. So would that not yeah, include absolutely. like climate justice or? Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. The environment is one of our themes. Like I said, I don't, we don't really have a, an example right now. We're still we're oh, going okay, through on a roll, yeah. We're going through on a rolling basis uh, the, through the projects that are being sent. But yeah, the, the environment is definitely a track that we're looking at and uh, and we'd be more than interested to, to have that. Awesome. Um, okay, very good. So, um, well, thank you, Killian. And uh, if, if you, do you wanna also put your email in chat? So if people yeah. have questions as a follow-up, they can reach out. Yeah, I'll do that now. Thanks. Excellent. Um, so, uh, Mikhail, if you uh, want to go ahead and um, we can have you as our next presenter. Okay, sure. Great. So, um, great. So I'll, I'll let you uh, go ahead and uh, give a brief introduction of, of you and what your project is all about. Um, yeah. First of all, thank you very much for having me today. Um, my name is Mikhail, you can call me Mike, it's, it's more easier. Uh, I'm a practicing attorney uh, and uh, I'm practicing for more than 15 years now. And at a certain point, uh, oh, I've created a project. Uh, well, it, it started as an uh, internal app for the um, case management. I would talk about uh, a bit more about this in my presentation, showing you the slides. And now it's transforming to a, a platform or a marketplace to connect uh, lawyers with the potential clients. And let me turn on the, uh, the slides so that you can have something beside my happy face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
just a second. Uh, okay. Can you can you see my yeah or oh, you see me you don't see my slides yet uh, actually your slides are up but they're good yeah we we can't hear you now can you hear me now yes yes we've got you now and we see your okay. slides okay fine so a bit about me. Um, I was always working as a, a solo practitioner or a partner in a small law firm or a larger one. And um, the last project uh, in the legal sphere, which uh, I launched together with my uh, team, was the A2 Attorneys. We started it in 2015. Uh, it's a small firm with 10 people aboard now. And um, back then, uh, we were uh, we were looking for a solution for, uh, to do the case management and to do the time billing, and um, created an app for ourselves and then delivered it to the market. And now it's transforming, as it tells you, to this marketplace. Before I switch on to the uh, project of mine, uh, I would like to tell you a bit about the Russian legal market because I'm pretty sure that, that you're not aware of the state of, of what's, what's going on here. So here is what we have. Um, um, in Russia, we uh, at present, you can practice law without being admitted to the bar and and even without having an education if you want. So, I mean, you can be a cook and you can put a plate that I'm giving a legal advice and you can go on. Uh, so we have around 75K uh, licensed attorneys across the country. Uh, the only privilege it gives you is that uh, you can represent clients in the criminal cases. Plus, uh, we have around 230, 250, no one can count that uh, exactly as in the US, um, uh, people who are practicing law, uh, meaning delivering some, some legal services to the public, as I mentioned, not licensed. Uh, so we have a completely free market entry and it's, uh, it's very interesting sometimes to w watch over the discussion in, in the West about the uh, losing losing the tides and accessing giving access to the to the legal practice to someone besides the uh, the lawyers because like this alternative business structure because we have it for years uh, and also one feature which I think is is quite uncommon is that we have a really large in-house departments. So for a, a mid-sized Russian company, it's normal to have a couple of in-house lawyers. And for the larger corporations, uh, it, it can be uh, tens and sometimes even thousands of, uh, sorry, thousands, hundreds of people, people uh, employed as in-house lawyers dealing with, with all types of, of bureaucracy and all that stuff. And I, I think it's pretty unusual for the Western markets. Um, in terms of, um, let's say, in terms of overall perception of, of, of justice, um, back then in 2007, only 26% uh, only of population measured uh, did know when to consult a lawyer. So most of the people, they, they don't know their rights and, uh, and they don't know when to address a lawyer at all. In 2007, again, uh, only around 18% of surveyed uh, actually consulted with a lawyer one, at least once in their life. It's slowly improving. In 2017, it, it went up to 26%. 
but still the majority of population say has never had any uh, any access to justice and believe me this is not because everything is so just that you don't need lawyers and unfortunately it's it's not the case so the awareness of owns rights is fairly low speaking about the since we're speaking about the the project and the business in some way um, speaking about the market size and and the legal market size the russian economy overall is about 112 uh comparing the gdp uh, to the US economy and the legal market is about one to 200 comparing uh, comparing in its uh, turnover. So total legal market in Russia, uh, there is no exact figures, but the, the rough estimation is around 1.5 billion uh, US dollars annually. Uh, and I've seen figures of the US uh, estimations like 350 to 450. So depending on the measurement, but uh, the, the Russian one is, is very uh, small. Another feature which we have is that the law firms are uh, small as well. And uh, many people are practicing and are, are being solo practitioners. The large law firm of Russia uh, is the one where you have like 50 lawyers uh, on board. The largest one will have, I think, around 800 or so. So it's a kind of mid-size Washington DC legal firm or something like that. Uh, so so the, the, I think the top 10 uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, professionals employed, the top 10 Russian firms uh, end up, the, the 10th one ends up, ends up with around like 50 to 70 lawyers maybe. Uh, then let me switch to the to some story of the project. It started in 2006, uh, where we, as I told you, where we founded the A2 attorneys, and we were seeking for a solution for billing mostly and and some case management. So we looked through the my case and and Clio back then, and and a couple of others, I think. Um, and we also looked at the Russian soft, which uh, we don't have it. Uh, we don't have that much options, but but there are some solutions available. Uh, and we faced two problems. So the foreign ones were not localized, and we cannot really. Uh, it's not about the interface. You can use the interface even in English, but you cannot do some things which which are needed for uh running the local practice the russian ones which existed at the time uh, were not say lawyer friendly so these were mostly systems designed for some other purposes and and then somehow fitted to to let the lawyers do, do their stuff but not really convenient uh, so the idea which which came back then to, to my mind is like let's make our own uh, application for this uh, having uh, looking back those those three years if I knew back then what I know now probably I won't do that <laughs> uh, but but then it seemed to me like a nice idea to design something on my own to start doing it with the with the programmers and dig into this stuff uh, so we launched the project and it was completely, uh, back then it was completely an idea of making a soft for ourselves. And then at certain point we found that uh, there is a demand from, from the legal community for such software. So we decided to launch it for the public usage. Um, and we've done that in March, 2018. And at present, we uh, have around uh, 150 uh, lawyers and, and law firms subscribed to the system. Uh, we were actually using this uh, also for the purposes of debugging and testing it on, 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 on our own life. 
So we use it and we still use it in our office uh, successfully. And we even have some, some paying customers. And somewhere at that point where we begin to have some paying customers, we decided to check if we can launch it as a startup and started to explore the market and quickly found out that the market for, for such software is not big enough for this thing to be a startup. So it can be a normal IT business where you just sell the soft, uh, but it won't work as a startup, unfortunately. And uh, somewhere in uh, August to September 2018, uh, an idea came to, um, to us that uh, we should probably, if we want to launch it as a startup, we should create something like a marketplace uh, where actually businesses and, and, and uh, private clients can uh, connect with lawyers. Uh, we feel that there is a demand for this um, in Russia, uh, first of all, because uh, the lawyers are not always affordable, especially for the SMEs, and on the one hand. On the other hand, there are quite a lot of professionals and the legal market in itself is uh, fairly young. So uh, m many people and many, m many professionals and many firms, they didn't know how to market themselves. And they really need a tool to, to get better exposure to potential clients. And also the Russia is geographically big as, as you surely know. So sometimes there is a real demand to do something in other city, which can be some four or five hours flight from, from where you are. And um, there is a separate thing like lawyers hiring lawyers for some uh, work like uh, going to, to court to, to get the, the case examined and, and that stuff. So well, we dig deeper into this and we feel that there is a potential for a marketplace. Uh, so we started to think about how to launch it. Uh, having the, the, the experience with programming and, and creating a soft at that moment, um, we decided to make it in a kind of lean way. So uh, we're now in the process of actually creating the, we, we designed the logic, of the, the logic of the platform and we're now in the process of creation of an MVP of that platform to see if there is actual demand because now it's our hypothesis. And uh, then we have some, uh, I believe we can gather enough lawyers uh, on board of this. And then we would have a very, very big question of, of ensuring the quality of services uh, provided. So our initial approach is, first of all, we will do probably for, I know, first hundreds of lawyers, we will do it manually uh, because this, this is the safest way so far. Um, and then uh, our idea is to connect the, um, uh, connect the, case management soft, which we have, the A2 time part, to this uh, A2 legal platform and to allow lawyers not only to, you know, get the clients from the platform and then, then service them somehow, but to allow them to service the clients through the platform and run their practice uh, on that platform too. Uh, this is a slide of our team. We have uh, four persons uh, on board now, uh, dealing with the website, uh, IT support, and, and obviously the development of the uh, software. Uh, I will show you some, uh, we, at present I can't show you any statistics about the, the platform itself because it's not launched yet. So, uh, but, but we have some statistics on the uh, case management software. Uh, so we have, uh, we launched it in March 2018 and we have around 3,000 uh, uh, website visits from, from there on. Um, 300 professionals has left uh, their contact emails. 
We have launched, as I told you, we have launched around 150 service, servers, but the live ones, which are still in use, uh, is 20. And there are three at present. There, there have been more, but some of them canceled the subscription. So now there are three uh, persons actually paying for the usage of systems. So the conversion rate is, uh, at the end of the day is 1%. Um, which is fairly normal, I think, uh, for the freemium models. Um, we've done that without any marketing. So, so what, the only marketing we have is uh, my blog posts, and we managed to publish a couple of uh, articles about that in the uh, in the professional newspaper. But but this is it. So we were not spending anything on uh, on advertising or something like this. This is our plan on how we want to proceed. Uh, so we expect to launch an MVP of the platform in March uh, 2019. And the, the biggest idea uh, behind it is to actually go global because we know that there are clients in Russia who are interested in, in foreign legal services. I'm constantly getting those requests from, from the clients of mine. Uh, to connect them with some lawyers abroad to do this and that. Uh, so we want to, um, to make it in a way that uh, the foreign legal professionals can also uh, be on that platform and can also provide their services to the uh, local Russian clients. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the idea. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Great. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so questions. I arrived a little late, so maybe I'm sorry if you already covered this, but uh, first of all, very fascinating, very interesting. Yeah. I'm very uh, super interested. Yeah, just coming from. Uh, Russia, something similar. Mm -hmm. This is maybe the first I've heard, so this is awesome. Um, my question is, in terms of feedback, do you have a system maybe for kind of review of the lawyers who, who are, uh, who've already onboarded on the system, like so clients can say, oh, this was a great person, or this was a great, you know, experience for me, et cetera. Is there like a feedback mechanism or a review system that you you might think of down the line, if, even if not now? Obviously, you're still developing it, so. Well, the, the, the whole idea behind the platform is, um, we, we, uh, I didn't mention it here, but we have, mm -hmm. actually, we have marketplaces in Russia, mm -hmm. uh, but they act as, I would put it as a Uber for lawyers. So uh, you, uh, you don't really, they have the ratings there, okay. but don't, they don't really check the lawyers and uh, their uh, uh, their model is to sell the leads to the lawyers and and non lawyers also nice. mm -hmm. and, okay. and the people not are not always receiving the uh, let's say the best professional help they they can mm -hmm. so we would like to think of ourselves uh, in in a way like a booking com for for lawyers i would put it that way and obviously, we would have some system of ranking, and we're thinking of because in in the legal um, in the legal profession, I think that uh, it's very it's very important that you can be also rated by your fellow professionals, not only by the public. So we're thinking of introducing those uh, uh, ways that lawyers can actually assess. Uh, mm -hmm. one another mm -hmm. uh, um, it's it's it, i mean it's normal the uh, the rankings which which are there like legal 500 and, and right right, the right. Best lawyers. <laughs> they do it all all the time that sure. one lawyers mention another lawyers as professionals and mm -hmm. i think it's a good idea because it actually gives the uh gives the background to to uh, to whom you can trust and the main thing which which i believe is the is the crucial point is how to transfer this trust over the internet 
because mm. it's um, it, it, it's the tricky thing when I'm calling a Uber driver. Basically, I don't care who drives me. Uh, uh, he should have a car and it should be clean. Right. But right. when I'm hiring a lawyer, I need to be sure that I can trust this person. Mm -hmm. uh, and and this is so so the ranking uh, surely gonna be there, and it's gonna be the ranking not only f uh, made from the from the clients, but also from the professionals. And we're thinking now of some you know incentives for the clients to rate the lawyers because it's always the same when you're happy. You don't necessarily put put a review that the yes. oh I'm so happy. Right, right. If you like, if you if you are not right. happy, then you <laughs> then you do write a review. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing with that, I'm I'm not sure if it, uh, if it's gonna work and how we're gonna launch it. But another idea is that we want to combine this thing with a uh, with a case management system so that we can statistically see how these lawyers are performing. And if, if they agree to this, for example, we can put those stats on, on the system and say, okay, this is a lawyer who, is, who has handled, in fact, that amount of cases, and, and, and maybe, I don't know, build that amount of hours or something like, like this stuff. Because at present, on those platforms existing, I can see, uh, for example, commercials like, I won 10,000 court cases. And being a lawyer, I understand that the nice lady there on the photo looking like in her maybe 30s should be at least 90 years old mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, run all these cases through the court. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, we're thinking hard of how to avoid that because at a certain point it, it should be hard to do this manually, you know, but by selecting the people. Great. So, so these are great questions and first of all fascinating presentation i knew nothing about as you were right the legal market in russia but um maybe some broad similar themes on this feedback loop and so forth i don't know if you're familiar with the legal.io platform um a couple of codex fellows tony Lai and peter gunst uh were co-founders of that and um they, it is a um, intake system. Um, they uh, were working with bars, so it's for attorneys. It's a legal marketplace. They were also working with bar associations to do a feedback loop because bar associations have um, legal referral services that could be a back end that could collect such statistics on quality of the interaction. Um, and uh, so they they may have some wisdom to share broadly. I don't know, but. Um, Scott in our remote audience has a question in chat. So if you have chat open, you may want to read along. Mm -hmm. But um, basically, his uh, question has to do with um, uh, would the type of, um, I think, law school uh, type experience that World, his World University and School is running, could Russians who graduate from this hypothetical law school sit for the bar in Russia and then practice. Um, I, th I think you mentioned there wasn't s such an exam, but maybe there actually there is licensing in the criminal justice realm, right? Yeah. Um, the, the, the system, uh, so we, uh, we have lots of, uh, it, 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 it was, uh, it was happening, uh, I would put it historically because when the, the Soviet Union collapsed, and the the new era of uh, uh, of Russia has started. And there was uh, um, suddenly a huge demand for for the legal professionals uh, and to service all the all, all the relationship ships which which came to the to the economy suddenly. So, um, and the attorneys, the licensed attorneys back then in Soviet Union, they were only used for the criminal cases because there were no, obviously, in, in the, when state owns everything, there were no, like, you know, court disputes <laughs> between the state and the state. Um, so, so the profession became completely unregulated and the only piece staying regulated was the criminal. As for the uh, educational thing, so um uh, we're slowly now moving towards the uh regulation and uh, i think that while well, there is a special program on this 
the federal standard, uh, which says that uh, like in five years, we want to have every lawyer practicing to be admitted to the bar. There is no law as such, but there is an idea to, to make this. Uh, and also we, we have now recently introduced some uh, some uh, some legislative changes which says that you cannot practice law you, you cannot sorry you can practice but you cannot represent in court if you don't have a law degree so before that it was possible like like I told you you're coming and saying I want to represent you in court okay if I if I agree as a client I give you a power of attorney go ahead you're you're going to court no one checks but now uh, you need to have a law degree and uh, to, get a, uh, to get a law degree in Russia, you have to be licensed in Russia. So it can be done remotely. There is a such thing as a licensing for, for those remote education, but you need to get this license in Russia. Otherwise, you won't be able to represent in court. But still, you can, I don't know, you can watch on YouTube the, uh, how to be a lawyer, or even some, I don't know, suits or Boston legal, and, and then say, I want to practice. <laughs> At okay. present, it, it is possible. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, just, just in case you ever need any, anything about the Russian legal market or something, go ahead, contact me. I'll, I'll be happy to help. <laughs> fantastic. Well, just, thank as you a quick, so much. As Mike. a quick follow-up, are there yeah. any online law schools in Russia by any chance as startups? Uh, I never heard of any of anything like this in the form of a startup. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there are uh, some online courses uh, available from from the universities, though in, in general, I'm, I'm, I'm actually um, a lecturer in the Moscow State Law Academy, which I had a privilege to um, to graduate in 2003 and now I'm, I'm giving there some lectures. Uh, I would say that, that the traditional, uh, traditional education, education, legal education is a bit old fashioned. <laughs> so it's, it's, I think it's far from going online. Uh, but I can, I can search for, for an online courses. And I think that something like this should exist here, though, maybe not in the form of a startup. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank okay. you for having me. Yeah. Th and, uh, Mike, thank you so much. If you want to stop sharing your screen before you yeah, sign off, sure. that would be great. Sure. Sure. Just a second. Uh -huh. uh, there we go. Perfect. All right, thanks again. Um, and we're going to go ahead and ask uh, Juliano uh, to present. Juliano, if you're out there. And, and uh, I would ask Rafael to, I would ask also Rafael to, sure, to put the slides on the screen. Yeah. Uh, Rafael? Ah, uh, here we go. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so um, I've met uh, Roland in a conference in... Uh, Juliano, your audio is not good. Okay, so I suggested uh, we we'll talk a little bit is, uh, is Juliana, it better now? You, yeah, that's better. Thank you. Rafael? Uh, Juliano, can you hear us? Is it working now? Is it better uh, now? It's yeah, not it's great. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah. You're, it's, it's, it's not good. Okay. Let me try something. Uh, the audio okay, is good. Okay.
Is it is it better now? Oh, yeah, perfect. much better. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Okay. Uh oh, <laughs> it got bad again. Yeah, it got bad again. Juliano? Let me see. Transaction. Juliano? What, what about now? Uh, now it's better. What is this? Do you want to try talking? Now we got some music. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know why. To... It might be better to turn off your video. Yeah. It's not as important. Yeah, turn off your video. You no? Yeah, now is better. Okay. So yeah, let's go try. Ahead. Oh, that's perfect. That's yeah. perfect. We, we don't, we don't Yay. Know. All right. Okay, so uh, I'm... Uh, the idea he is talking about which is a non-profit association of research on artificial intelligence and law that I have uh, created uh, one year ago uh, together with uh, um, um, my colleagues, uh, professors of uh, the University of Sao Paulo. And uh, actually, my research is on legal theory and also on artificial intelligence. I'm working mainly with logical models for uh, um, representing statutory interpretation in law. And I have uh, much contact with uh, professors of the computer science department during due to this focus of my research. So last year we decided to create this non-profit association. Uh, in order to um, uh, attach to initiatives of investment on uh, AI and law in Brazil by law techs, uh, so that we could uh, link those projects of automa uh, automation in, uh, in Brazil uh, to, to academic research. So uh, Logarithm is not a uh, law tech, it does, it does not... Uh, um, intend to uh, provide any products to the market, but it pr uh, intend to be at, at one hand um, on the what we call AI and law front to link uh, research product projects to uh, 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 product development by law techs. And uh, on the other hand, uh, what in the front, which we call uh, AI law, we intend to um, be a center for uh, uh, um, for um, uh, research on legal issues related to AI, and also to inform policymakers about what uh, about what AI is. Um, and so that uh, the policies uh, on this field in Brazil can be better informed. Uh, uh, Rafael, can you go to the other one? So these are the, the two fronts. Uh, you can, can uh, go to the other one. Um, uh, again, again, another one. Yeah, I, I have already talked about all that. So you just just can can move forward. Is there any way to make the screen a little bigger, expand, yeah. or if not, it's okay? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, that's yeah. better. Yeah, no, yeah. no, this is just the team. It's an eclectic yeah. team team of professors of the University of Sao Paulo. So it's a, uh, an association for research. That is me from the law faculty, Marcelo Finger from computer science. Uh, there are uh, also a professor from philosophy, another professor from engineering, and uh, one from economics. And then uh, Renata Wasserman is also from computer science. So it's a, an eclectic team 
but all of uh, all of us are uh, involved in research uh, with AI, so we decided to create a center so that we could attract researchers and also link research to product development in the Brazilian law tech market. But I, I would just like to emphasize again that we are not a law tech, we don't to offer any product at all. Uh, so let's move forward. Yeah, can we move forward? I would like now to, to talk just about uh, three projects uh, that are uh, in development in, in, in our in logarithm, just so that you can have an idea. Um, this is the this is the project that we call the uh, junior law firm fear uh, four uh, point zero. Uh, there is um, there is a, a junior law firm in the University of São Paulo, which uh, already is, is which are actually celebrating 100 years 100 years this year, and it's the biggest private um, legal aid um, company in Brazil, uh, and it has it has a very important beneficial role in the in uh, in brazil uh, these are some of the numbers the, the, the this we just call the department of justice uh, but actually is a junior law firm a clinic made only by students of the university of sao paulo law school and they have uh, 15 tutors which are already lawyers who previously were worked in this uh, clinic there are 70 students involved and they um, they are responsible nowadays for 1,800 cases of uh, people uh, uh, who are families which are which has income lower than $800 um, so uh, there are actually uh, new 200 new cases entry each year and um, uh, there is a really a big load of work and process for them to, them to take care of. And this project uh, is intended uh, to, uh, uh, to bring automatization into the, um, the workings of the clinic because everything they do is manual. Most of the, the cases are related to tort law in consumer law and family law and there is much of a, a much repetitive work there and what is happening is since there are too many cases for 70 students to share the, each student is dealing uh, of around uh, 40 cases and they don't have enough time to dedicate uh, 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 to to these cases properly and uh, as a didactic experience, this uh, work is, is losing too much with this uh, environment. So we are going to, the project uh, intends to uh, automate the, the generation of documents and the workflow of the processes. Um, and then, but the idea is to use a system um, which is developed by Alotech, which is also supporting this project, uh, which is called uh, Lotex, which is um, um, a programming um, uh, software where you can uh, uh, program the petitions by using um, decision trees. So what we want to do as a didactic experience for the students is that they are going to be much more focused in programming and this deciding and deliberating about what are the key questions of each petition so that uh, they can uh, uh, work by just uh, Juliano we can't hear you can you hear us the there we go also uh, uh, there's the 
Yes, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, better. Okay. So the idea then is that they can spend more time discussing the uh, types of case they have, the types of petitions, so that they can um, uh, elaborate and program the, the petitions instead of uh, spending energy by writing them. So, and then we are going to enlarge the clinic so that it will accept not only students of the law school, but also the computer science uh, laws of the computer science school. And then uh, we expect that this uh, um, integration of computer sciences and, uh, and uh, uh, tr uh, aspirants to, to be lawyers will it's going to be productive to develop more products in terms of analytics of their performance and uh, computational tools uh, to this uh, junior law firm. So this is uh, the idea of the project, uh, which is uh, uh, in, in course. Uh, let's move to the other project. Uh, by, um, This is just an example of the decision trees with this, this uh, program that they are using. And this is uh, another um, project of this association. I'm, I'm emphasizing those projects which uh, has no, actually no um, uh, are not drive uh, market driven. Uh, this is a project uh, uh, relating to gender stereotypes in rape cases in, in Brazil. Uh, there is um, a research for, uh, 30, for 30 years ago uh, made by uh, um, uh, Brazilian jurists, which is called Rape or Courtesy. The title of the book is that because uh, one of the decisions that was uh, analyzing this um, research, one of the court decisions referred to the rape as a courtesy, and the focus of the work was to uh, investigate a relation between gender stereotype and the conclusions of uh, cases. And uh, as a quantitatively explored and very complex, it's shown how um, um, machism in the culture of, of uh, uh, legal of, of judges was influencing the results of case on rape. Okay, so we have uh, um, also um, in a. Uh, uh, um, an overview I have detected many other Juliano can oh, you yeah. hear us <laughs> Juliano 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 we can't we can't hear you um Yeah, Juliano. Wait, wait, wait. Can you... Sorry, all the time. Yeah, Juli Juliano, um, we're coming just... this. Juliano. Music. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put your email in yes. the chat box. Unfortunately, we're, we're running up on time, so maybe um, can I put your email in the chat and people can reach out yeah. to you if there's questions? Yeah, okay. 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 And um, if maybe we can go ahead and um, if you want to, uh, are, are you done with the presentation or do you want to do you have a couple more slides? 
No, it was. Uh, I was. There was only one uh, last slide about another project, but uh, I think that there you could already had an idea about which are the projects. This the last one is a uh, one on the on the on the field of uh, um, um, AI law, and it's about regulation of fake news. We have. Uh, um, uh, prepared a project of statute, uh, uh, a new statute on social networks, which was uh, discussed in the Ministry of Communication, and it's probably going to be proposed as uh, a law by the Brazilian Senate. It's about uh, one of our projects of our, of our group. So this is just for you to have an idea of what are the research that we are developing in the algorithm, uh, which is uh, basically academic research, but we are reaching out uh, to the uh, market to try to bring research uh, to the community and also to, um, also to um, influence uh, policy making. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, this, some, this is really fascinating, so thank you for sharing. Um, we'll, we'll try to, since we've got your audio back up, we'll try to maybe take a quick question or two for um, Juliano. Any questions? Juliano, thank you. This is Scott McLeod. I, I'm curious if, uh, MIT OpenCourseWare centric resources on artificial intelligence would be helpful and even planned in Portuguese. So Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, OpenCourseWare on artificial intelligence and maybe with a legal focus. Would that be helpful to you? Yeah, probably. I'll be in touch with, via email about this further. Thank you very much. Yeah, please send an email and we, we get in touch and then we can uh, continue to, to, to discuss. Uh, I, would much, uh, be, I would, be, would be much interested to, to develop this, uh, this further. Great. Um, so we will, uh, so thanks again, um, Juliano. Uh, we really appreciate your work um, and your presentation. Uh, we will be um, meeting again uh, next week, Codex will, for a, week, for a Thursday meeting. So we'll have some new presenters then. Uh, so we will see everybody then. All right, take care. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. Bye.